Story 1. The Setup While studying at uni, I crossed paths with a hostile prof, let's call him Prof, Nastaman, who absolutely did not want to be questioned about anything during class. Disruptive, he'd say, I'm a researcher with a PhD, he'd say, you're wasting my time, he'd say, study harder, he'd say. Some of the other things he'd say would likely get this post deleted if I repeated them here. The trigger. I missed a lecture, so just before the next class started, I asked him if I might have a copy of his lecture notes from the class I'd missed. He blew up at me, slammed his papers down, and started ripping me a new one, saying that if I was not serious about his class, then I shouldn't be in it, and that I should just drop it. This went on until about five minutes into the class. Nobody else said a word, and the class continued. Cue the malicious compliance. The uni had a surplus barn where unneeded equipment was palletized and sold at bulk rates. I got there first thing in the morning and spotted a pallet with a bunch of computer junk on it. For $50 us, I ended up with a dot matrix printer, a few 1200 baud modems and an extended technology PC, monitor and keyboard setup. Of course, I also got a receipt. My place wasn't far, so I borrowed a wheelbarrow and brought it all home in two trips. The printer was beyond repair. Only two of the modems still worked. The PC system booted up on the first try. I looked through the directory and saw what looked like drafts of a research paper and a whole lot of data files as well. The HDD's volume name was the same as Prof. Nastiman's, so I rang up his office. His secretary, a sweet grandmotherly type, answered the phone. I explained what I had found. She asked me to hold. A minute or two later, Prof. Nastaman himself was on the line telling me to get those files off the computer now. Sir. Yes, sir. I did it the right way, too. I deleted all the data and document files. Then I overwrote the empty drive space with a huge file full of random bytes of data, deleted the file, and repeated the process six more times. Then I reformatted the HDD with a new OS. The PC booted right up to the DOS prompt and I was happy with my new PC. The fallout. At the next class session, Prof. Nastiman greeted me by my name and politely asked if I had removed the files from my computer yet. Of course, sir. I removed those files from my computer, just like you told me to. Why, were they important? He told me how important the files were. Something to do with two or three years of research data for a corporate-backed project. Sorry, sir, but you told me to get those files off my computer, so I did. Your secretary and anyone else listening in will verify that. Those files are gone, and there is nothing anyone can do about it. The Epilogue Prof. Nastaman had to default on his project, which looked bad for his department and the university as well. Rumors suggested that he had made no backups because he feared plagiarism. I had a few discussions with the dean and some others about this, but it always came down to Prof. Nastiman's own carelessness. I finished the class, got a decent grade, and never saw him again. Story 2 So I had bad leg pain last month and had to use a walker slash cane to get around. Turns out I had tumors, not malignant. Had surgery recently and put on a wound vac before switching to a wet-to-dry bandage last week. As my wound is healing up faster than expected, I can now walk better. I'm using a walker when I go out. Now just waiting for my next operation to get it sutured. Events of this story happened yesterday. Now, story time. As mentioned, I'm walking well again. Physical therapy helped a lot. But unfortunately, I can't walk too well either as my injury is still healing up and I can't fully bend nor lift my legs straight up. For example, when I get into or out of bed, I need to be sitting down, then have to scoot my foot from my injured leg on top of my right foot and lift it up into a bent position, then slowly carry it up and over onto the bed. Or when walking, I have to move my leg out to the side and forward to take a step. So it looks quite awkward. It doesn't help that a few nights ago, I stepped on a chicken bone my dog left in the hallway at night with my right foot and got a gash on my heel. So now I'm walking with one leg out to the side and the other on my tiptoes. This is a tiny bit important. 
So my dad, my awkward steps, and I headed off to the store for groceries. I had my walker and cane, but since there were grocery carts, there was no need to use them. We make our way in, and since I have the cart for support, my dad grabs a basket instead, and we decide to split up to cover more ground, while we get what we need. So I'm going about my business grabbing items, checking prices, checking on my phone to see if we have enough money, occasionally putting things back. I like to walk around as it helps with my leg as well as keep me occupied. So I'm putting things back in their respective places and aisles, just taking my sweet time. Note that I'm not wearing anything that resembles this store's uniform, which is black short sleeve button-up, black slacks, black shoes slash non-slip boots. I'm in a black t-shirt, pink shorts, and wearing socks and sandals. I'm now near the frozen dairy section, picking up different cheeses and putting them back. Then doing the same with some ice cream tubs, chocolate swirl, chocolate chip, Neapolitan, rainbow, mint chocolate chip. Oh how my sugar levels must hate me. At some point, this man comes up near me and stops. So I pull my cart to the side, thinking he's trying to get through. I wasn't blocking the aisle, and there was plenty of space, but I like to be polite. He starts up. Hey excuse me, could you help me out with finding a specific item? Also, I don't need these anymore. Do you mind? As he takes packs and bags of meat from his cart and places them in mine. Now I have my own meat already picked out from the deli section, and this guy is quickly placing his own, along with other items like beans, pasta, drinks, and what have you, in my cart, and now they're mixed up with mine, and I have no way of knowing which belong to who. I quickly try to pull my cart away and put my hand out forward over my cart to stop him. Whoa, whoa, no, 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 I do, I don't work here, I'm sorry. He stops, but now his friendly demeanor changes. I just saw you putting things back, a few more won't hurt. I shake my head, no, well, yeah, but again, I don't work here, I don't even have the outfit or uniform. I'm just doing my shopping, please take your things back. His face changes again and looks genuinely sorry. Okay, okay, I'm sorry, really, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that, and he takes his things back. The end? Oh no, not just yet, unfortunately. I apologize for giving off the wrong impression that I worked there. I had no reason to apologize, but that's just how I am. I once turned a corner and bumped into it and apologized to the wall, no joke, and we said our goodbyes. I continue making my way down the aisles, once again taking and placing items when a woman comes up this time. She sees me and quickly puts her basket down and speed walks towards me, snapping her fingers at me with a hey, hey you, boy, boy. I thought to myself, oh not. Nah. Instead of my friendly, yes, I unfortunately still give her the time of day and simply answer, what, in a rather rude and annoyed tone. She stopped in her tracks and scoffed. Ugh, what? I'll let you know what. There's nobody at the registers, there's only one girl there, and the line is so long and far. Go open another one. Now I'm not one for confrontation, especially if it can be avoided, but I won't let anyone walk over me anymore as I had done in the past. I've been going through hell lately, and I've finally decided to grow a backbone. First off, I don't work here, does it look like I do? Second, don't talk down to me like that, I'm not your child. This, she interrupts me. No listen here honey, I'll talk however I want, you're no one to tell me anything. Who are you to lecture me? Get me someone that isn't an insult for a mentally challenged person to teach you how to do your job. I shake my head in disappointment. That's messed up, don't say that. Good luck to you, and I begin to walk off. Again, I'm walking awkwardly and she points this out as she stays behind. Well if it walks and talks like a duck. I shut my eyes, grit my teeth grip the cart handle and take a deep breath, but keep moving without looking back. Dad and I meet up again, and he puts his basket in my cart. We make our way to the registers, and two more have opened up. He needs to use the restroom so I wait behind before getting in line. He had the money and the lines were short, and I didn't want to keep other people waiting at checkout while he was gone. Who should walk by but the witch from earlier, she eventually notices me as well, and we glare at each other, and she gets out of line and up towards an actual worker standing off to the side. She tugs his arm, points to me, and both make their way toward me. 
Him, him. Me, me, me what? She tugs on the worker's arm and keeps pointing. He's the one who harassed me and insulted me. He wouldn't let me get a word in when I needed help and brushed me off. Very rude. Worker is either slow, isn't paying attention, or is trying too hard to stay on the customer's good side. He barely raised his eyes at me and said with a shoulder shrug, Dude, what? Come on, man, you're better than this. What, they didn't teach you that that isn't how you deal with customers. Basic training 101. Woman pipes up. You need to respect your elders, don't you know? I snap back, tired of nobody getting the hint. I don't care who you are. Respect is earned. You're the last person to be talking about respect. I don't work here. Do you understand you know what? Screw this. I leave the cart where it is just as my dad is making his way back and limp towards him. He asks, What happened? Where's the cart? Why aren't you in line? I say in Spanish, They can go to hell. They have no respect here. That freaking lady won't stop bothering me, and that guy doesn't care about what she's saying. I tried explaining I don't work here, and they're both being idiots. My dad glares over at them, puts his arm around my shoulder, and we slowly walk out the store. He says in Spanish, Well, then they can go to hell. He said, Mind you, I don't curse at all in Spanish. I wasn't raised that way since my parents didn't even speak that way around me growing up. I'm even afraid to say pinch, which basically means freaking, as in no freaking way, so me cursing up a little storm like that meant I was quite mad. We ended up doing our shopping at another store further away, peacefully. To the first guy in the freezer section, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Sorry again for the confusion. To the lady, I hope you get a hangnail and ingrown toenail on your pinky toe. To the ignorant cashier, I hope you're the last to close up. Everyone's gone home, and three of your tires have popped so you have no ride home. Story 3 Hey dudes, I'm back. Thank you to everyone who took the time to offer me advice on my last post. First of all, I want to clarify that not telling my husband what his mother did was never an option. She wouldn't remove the pictures from her house unless I either told him or threatened her had I done the latter, she could use that against me in the future, or even imply I agreed with her. Plus, he was bound to find out at some point, and I knew it would be better if it came from me. I asked how to do it, not whether I should. So I sat him down last Saturday and broke the news. I explained what the pictures were and Mill's excuses for them. I also showed him the texts she'd sent me since my visit. The whole conversation, I was calm and straightforward but made it very clear that not only did Mill's actions completely disgust me, but I never agreed with her about his appearance. He's the most gorgeous man I've ever met, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with his nose. I also made sure to point out that the Photoshop nose made him look like front-facing Phineas from Phineas and Ferb, and Mill needs to get her eyes checked if she really thought it looked good. I thought the news would hurt him, and I was right. He didn't cry or anything but I could see it in his face. The odd but common combination of disappointment and acceptance. He knew his mother wouldn't change, but still had some hope. It was almost heartbreaking to watch. But for the first time in a while, he seemed to believe me when I said his nose was normal. He told me that now that he knew just how ridiculous Mill was willing to be, her opinion meant a lot less to him. So even though he's hurt, he feels stronger than ever. As many of you suggested, I told him that he was free to approach the situation however he pleased, but I don't want to be around his mother anymore. Most importantly, I don't want her around our son or any other kids we might have, not only because of the guilt-tripping tantrums that have become her standard behavior, but also because of the way she treats the people she's supposed to love. I know she loves her family, but I doubt she knows how love works. If she's willing to treat her sons like this, I fully expect her to be even worse to her grandchildren. In the end, my husband and I decided we're going very LC with Mill until the holidays. Some of his relatives are throwing a party the week before Christmas, and she'll be there. We thought about skipping it, but he has cousins he hasn't seen in years coming for the party. He's been looking forward to seeing them for months, and it doesn't feel fair to let Mill ruin his excitement. 
after the holidays, will decide how to proceed. Regardless, she won't be allowed to see our son at the hospital when he's born. And once we bring him home, she won't be left alone with the baby. It doesn't matter how much she tries to improve, that is not something we're willing to budge on. In spite of everything, my husband doesn't want to cut ties with his mother, and I understand that. Even if he wanted to, he can't go fully NC without cutting off the rest of his maternal family as well, which he is firmly against. What works best for now is to treat her like Domino's Pizza. She exists and that's fine, but we're not getting involved until she actually improves. I also decided to tell some of my own family about this, and everyone I've talked to agrees that Mill went over the line. My father is a narcissist who I'm mostly LC with due to his entitled behavior most recently. He tried to make me disinvite his ex from my wedding so he could bring his mistress and even he was offended on my husband's behalf. And if even my mediocre, respect your elder's father thinks your children are right about you being an asshole, you've probably gone too far. We talked to my Bill, and he's the one who informed Mill of our decision. She didn't take the news well. She's now trying to call both me and my husband, and keeps texting apologies and promises to take the pictures down. We're ignoring her. Bill visited her yesterday, and apparently the pictures are gone. She believed that was enough for us to forgive her, but he clarified that there is still a lot of work that needs to be done. Before anyone calls us dramatic, this isn't just about the Photoshop. This is about the damage she's caused in both her son's lives. I was abused in a similar fashion in my teens by dad's ex, and I refuse to allow my child to grow up believing he's anything less than beautiful. Same goes for my husband. Story 4. After college, I bounced around different jobs, trying to find my place in the world. I'd always loved food, so when I saw an opening at this popular counter-serve burrito place, I figured why not give it a shot. The place was known for its amazing queso, which they didn't skimp on. It wasn't some big chain, just a local spot with a simple Q logo. I started as a regular employee, but my work ethic and knack for customer service quickly caught the owner's eye. Within a few months, I was promoted to manager. I took pride in running a tight ship. Our staff was like a little family, and we all worked hard to keep our customers happy. One of my favorite co-workers was this older lady, a military veteran whose first language was in English. Despite the language barrier, she was always polite and patient with customers. I'll call her the vet for this story. Anyway, this all happened about a year into my management role, on a quiet evening around 8 p.m. I was in the back office doing some paperwork when I heard raised voices from the front. Curious, I poked my head out to see what was going on. There was this woman at the counter probably in her early 40s who seemed to be giving the vet a hard time. I decided to hang back for a moment and observe, trusting my staff to handle things. The vet... Ma'am, I understand you want extra meat, but that much would be an additional charge. The woman? What? That's ridiculous. I'm a regular customer here. I shouldn't have to pay extra. The vet? I apologize, but it's our policy. A little extra is fine, but this much would be. The woman? This is unacceptable. I come here all the time. Where's your manager? That was my cue. I stepped out from the back, ready to defuse the situation. Me, good evening, ma'am. I'm the manager on duty. Is there a problem? The woman? Yes, there is. Your employee here is trying to charge me extra for meat. I'm a loyal customer, and I've never been treated like this before. Now, I've been working there for months, putting in 40-hour weeks, and I'd never seen this woman before. But I decided to give her the benefit of the doubt. Me. I understand your frustration, but our policy is to charge for significant extra portions. We're happy to add a little extra at no charge, but beyond that. The woman, this is ridiculous. I can't believe you're treating me like this. Is it because I'm a woman or because of my skin color? I was taken aback. Race hadn't even crossed my mind until she brought it up. Me, ma'am, I can assure you that your gender and race have nothing to do with this. We apply this policy to all our customers equally. The woman, liar, you're just discriminating against me.
Her voice was getting louder, and other customers were starting to stare. I knew I had to put an end to this. Me, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to ask you to leave. We don't tolerate this kind of behavior towards our staff or other customers. The woman, you can't kick me out. This is racism. Me, the only reason you're being asked to leave is because of your behavior. You've been rude to our staff and disruptive to other customers. Your race and gender have nothing to do with it. The woman, you'll regret this. I'll sue this place. Before I could respond, she suddenly lunged at me, swinging her purse. I managed to step back, avoiding the hit. The vet, who had been quietly observing, sprang into action. The vet, I'm calling the police. You can't assault people. The woman, go ahead. They'll see how you're discriminating against me. While the vet called the police, I tried to keep the situation under control. Other customers were offering to give statements about what they'd seen. Within minutes, we heard sirens. Two police officers walked in, quickly assessing the situation. Officer, what seems to be the problem here? Me. This woman became aggressive when asked to pay for extra food. She then attempted to assault me when asked to leave. The woman, that's a lie. They're discriminating against me. Several customers spoke up, confirming my version of events. The officers listened to everyone, then turned to the woman. Officer, ma'am, based on multiple witness accounts, we're placing you under arrest for attempted assault. As they led her out in handcuffs, she was still yelling about discrimination and threatening lawsuits. Once she was gone, a sense of relief washed over the restaurant. Several customers came up to express their support, and I made sure to comp their meals for the trouble. After things calmed down, I gathered the staff for a quick meeting. Me, I just want to thank you all for handling that situation so well, especially you. I nodded at the vet, who smiled back. The vet, no need for thanks. We're a team. That night reinforced something I'd always believed that character matters more than anything else. It doesn't matter who you are or where you come from. Treat people with respect, and you'll get respect in return. And if you don't, well, you might just end up in the back of a police car. Story 5 Cast Me, Entitled Mom, Embarrassed Daughter, Cool Dad, Manager of the Restaurant, and Tech Dude who is a former co-worker, Turned good friend semi-retired. Think the dude from Big Lebowski. Add a master's in computers and electronics. A bit of mad scientist. Shake thoroughly, and you pretty much have tech dude. Background. I am a field guy for a large communications company. One of the services we provide is wireless calling. I am not a customer facing, just one of the many individuals who make it all work. I had happened to take a day off, though I did have my work phone on me, just in case. I also foolishly grabbed a zip-up hoodie with a company logo on the sleeve, on my way out the door. Tech dude calls me up asking me to come grab lunch with him, sometime when I am in the area. As I was actually around the corner from his summer abode, I mentioned the restaurant down the way on the water, because they have outdoor seating. I get to the restaurant. The tech dude is already seated sipping on a Shirley Temple, clear lemon-lime pop, grenadine, and a maraschino cherry to top it off with another one set aside for me. Yes, we both enjoy these drinks. Maybe it's just the kids in us, but we're both driving so no alcohol. I don't pay much attention to the other patrons, just head straight to the table signaling the waitress I know where I'm going. After our greeting a big, hey, how have you been? An ordering of the daily special, an appetizer is delivered. Tech dude gets down to his latest personal project, asking my thoughts along the way. My work phone interrupts. I answer with the company name just in case it's a test call before directing the caller to a coworker who would be able to help them that day. After hanging up the phone, I hear a Fran Drescher Eck voice somewhere behind me. Sir, excuse me, sir, sir, sir. And suddenly feel a presence of a person behind my right shoulder. I turn and have to look upwards to see a large Karen of about mid-forties complete with a haircut that could only be described as make my hair look like the body of a chicken complete with backside, no feet, neck, or head, standing about eight inches off the back of my chair. I think to myself, woman, have you ever heard of COVID? Even though I am fully vaccinated, 
I still don't want her looming over me in my personal space. Me? Yes? Entitled mother. Did you say you worked for the phones? Pointing at the sleeve of my hoodie. Me. Yes, I do. Today is my day off, but I might be able to. You need to help me right now. My lunch is being utterly ruined by my daughter's ex-boyfriend. And dramatically points to the daughter who is trying to hide her face with a menu. There is no one else at the table. Embarrassed daughter. Mom, please. No, I'm going to get this stopped once and for all. It's harassment. Mom, please let those two eat. I can handle it. Entitled mother. No, these two work for the phones and I am going to make them stop this immediately. Tech dude. Hey, I don't work for the phones or you lady. Of course they wouldn't hire anyone like you. You. Tech dude shoots me a screw her look. I'm not able to help you. I am not a customer. I demand you block him from harassing us now. Me? Ma'am, I'm sorry you are experiencing this, but you need to call. Entitled mother. Nam, I won't call anyone. You can do it. I need you to stop him now. Even if I was working, I would not be able to stop him from calling her, I simply. Don't tell me you can't, and he's non-stop texting, not calling. Me, seeing that my current approach isn't working, I'm sorry that he is doing that. You should advise your daughter to block his number from her phone. It would be the easiest way to stop his communications. Entitled mother, he keeps changing numbers. You need to. Poking me in the chest as she said you. Both the tech dude and I stand up. I see the manager rushing towards us out of the corner of my eye. The entitled mother immediately switches gears. Oh, I see. Take his side. I'm a loyal long-term customer. I'm going to call your boss and get you fired. As if spelling out fired in a sing-song tone would change my answers. Manager. Ma'am, you need to return to your table and leave the other customers alone. Entitled mother. Oh, so he won't do his job, and I'm the one who needs to leave him alone. Don't you know who I am? I'll have your job. The tech dude, manager, and I all share a, I have no flying clue who she is look. The embarrassed daughter has the menu over her head face down on the table. I truly feel sorry for the daughter. Manager, ma'am, you need to sit down and leave my customers alone, or you can leave. Entitled mother, I will not sit down. I can't enjoy my lunch because he, points at me, won't do his job. Again doing that sing-song spelling bit. Manager looks at me, with a, is there anything you want to say, look. Me? I'm sorry ma'am, I simply do not have access to accounts, and, the entitled mother tries to interrupt. And even if I did, there are very specific rules for making account changes. The entitled mother tries to interrupt again, but I keep going. I can't just block someone because you interrupt my lunch. She tries again but fails. Furthermore, if he keeps changing numbers to avoid blocks, that is harassment, a legal matter. I would suggest getting a no contact order and recording any time he does attempt to contact her. The embarrassed daughter quickly walks off towards the front, trying to cover her face with her hands. What I can see of her face is a ketchup bottle red. The entitled mother starts again, and this time I let her go. Entitled mother, that's just nonsense. You just don't want to do your job. I know you can block him. Manager signals something to one of her waitstaff. Ma'am, this is your last warning. These two have been more than kind since you interrupted their lunch. I will call the police if you do not sit down or leave immediately. Entitled mother, fine, but I'm calling all of your bosses. You're all going to be fired. Then sing song again. You don't know who you're messing with. I mean, really. My kids stopped that when they were five. We all sit down. The embarrassed daughter is still missing. And I've repositioned in order to be sure the entitled mother cannot sneak up on me again. Manager apologizes and offers to move us inside while she checks on the rest of our order. But we decline moving. I notice that all of the waitstaff is staying off the deck. Only the manager is coming out now to help with other customers, avoiding the entitled mother. The entitled mother obviously notices this too and is getting more visibly unsettled trying to bring other customers into siding with her. 
The tech dude sees me watching the situation and offers a hey screw that Karen. He almost never swears so I know he might as well be saying she should see you next Tuesday. I signal the manager over and quietly request that she send someone to check on the embarrassed daughter. I was truly concerned about her mental state. The manager informs me that she has sent someone and is currently making sure all of her needs are being taken care of. Then she smiles and says she'll be right back. As the manager returns with our plates, the bartender with two uniformed officers in tow walks onto the deck. The manager nods and all four approach the entitled mother. From what I can hear of the conversation, the manager was the daughter of the owners and they were going to permanently bar the entitled mother from the premises. The bartender comically takes a picture of the entitled mother. Then the police inform the mother that her daughter will not be leaving the restaurant with her. The cool dad would be picking the daughter up. This sends the entitled mother into orbit. She tosses out a few, you can't do this, it's their fault. Don't you know who I am? She's my daughter, among other not so kind sayings, flinging her arms pointing at us and getting louder and louder. Finally, there is a brief scuffle. She ends up in cuffs and gets lead out of the restaurant complete with cheers from most everyone else on the deck. The daughter returns to collect what's left at the table. She approaches us apologizing for her mom's behavior, says she heard that I was concerned about her and thanks me for my kindness and says that the cool dad wants to pay for our lunches. We declined, but the cool dad did it anyway. Story 6 My dad is elderly, partially disabled as he walks with a cane and has mobility issues, and a narcissist. My mom passed away two years ago unexpectedly. She was the single most person I was closest to in my life, and since her passing, difficult has been an understatement. My dad treats me as though I'm disposable. I have helped him in every way possible. Within the last year, I basically temporarily have moved in to help him as he had health issues earlier in the year and was in the hospital several times. He was diagnosed with some level of heart failure and has kidney disease, which was maintainable until this year when it worsened a bit because of the heart issues. I basically became his caretaker and took on this role, even against my better judgment of how he has treated me over time. My sister sometimes helps, but not often enough that it makes a difference. She is not working at the moment, and my dad gives her money to help her. In a lot of ways he tries to buy her affection because she has taken space from him when he's been disrespectful in the past, so now he tries to do everything to get her on his good side. However, with me, he basically treats me like he can say anything in the world to me. I've tried to set multiple boundaries and it's been very tricky territory. I plan to move out, I've been apartment searching which has been difficult. However, in the interim, it's made things very difficult because I depend on him financially right now since I basically put my whole life on hold to be his caretaker. So when he doesn't like a certain thing or being spoken to in a certain way, he basically then threatens not paying me for the following month. For instance, it's almost the end of October, something happened today, and he basically said he's not going to pay me November 1st, but doesn't want my help. It's become such a toxic situation. Today I came into the room he was in, and he had put his cane directly on top of my laptop. I asked him to please not do that. He then gave me immediately a very hard time and told me that I am always harassing him and telling him what to do. He told me my laptop should have not been there because that's always where he puts his cane. I tried to maintain calm, but at the same time I did tell him that it is not harassment to let him know when something isn't right. He doesn't like being told what to do, but at the same time he has done things that are unsafe recently that I've had to tell him. For instance, today he had spilled water on the floor and didn't notice it, I guess which I almost slipped on it. I told him he has to be mindful around the sink. Also, he will leave his portable heater on even when going out. I told him that he has to turn that off for safety reasons. He told me I am harassing him, that he doesn't want me around doesn't want me to talk, and doesn't want my help. He told me that he isn't going to give me money on the first of the month, and that he will do everything himself. There have been numerous times where he has threatened me like this before. It's honestly done mental damage on me to have to rely on somebody who can be so verbally abusive. 
I've been doing everything to try to get out of the situation, and I continue to vigorously. I regret coming to help him because before this, I had my own life and my own finances and apartment. He told me I will amount to nothing in my life, that I'm so irritating to be around and more. It makes me feel incredibly emotional and incredibly alone. I know I should not believe the things he says because he is a narcissist, but sometimes I react to what he says which I can't do because he typically uses that and says see how emotional you're getting. Today I didn't react in an emotional way, but I did tell him this is not okay. He basically kept on and then screamed at me to get out of his face. I'm honestly in a very bad emotional spot right now because of this. He makes me feel like I can't actually rely on him in any capacity and that he is able to basically flip the switch at any point in time with his emotions.